all once again to my YouTube channel. And uh, in this lesson, we are going to talk about sorts. This is chemistry. So we are going to know how to prepare different types of sorts, both soluble and insoluble sorts. So I wrote down this definition of a sort where I said a sort is a compound formed when the hydrogen ion of an acid are fully or partially repressed by a metal or ammonium. This is the definition of a sort, meaning that a sort will be formed when the hydrogen ion of an acid are fully or partially repressed by a metal or ammonium. This is a definition that you need to get. So if you are new to this YouTube channel, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to share this video. So a sort which is formed, this is a sort whereby the hydrogen ion of an acid are being depressed partially or fully by what? By a metal or ammonium. These are two things that you need to get. So a salt can be formed in two ways. So two ways of forming a what? A salt. We've got ways in which a salt can be formed. So ways of forming a salt. Ways of forming a salt. So how can you form a salt? Number one way in which a salt can be formed. So the first one is where you react an acid plus a base. So when we react an acid plus a base, what are we getting here? We are getting a salt plus water. This is what you need to understand. So this is one way in which a salt can be formed. So when you react an acid and a base, you are going to form a salt and water. And this type of a reaction is called neutralization reaction. It is called neutralization reaction. So if someone asks you a question and tells you what is neutralization reaction, you just need to say neutralization reaction is a reaction between an acid and a base to form a salt and water. This is what neutralization is. So we are going to discuss all these in details. I want you to stick, to stay tuned. So this is an acid, a base to give us a what? A salt plus water. And this type of a reaction is called a neutralization reaction, whereby an acid is reacting with a base. So an example, we can uh, get an acid. Let's say we've got this acid, which is what? We've got sulfuric acid. This is sulfuric acid. So sulfuric acid is reacting with what? A base which is sodium hydroxide. So what are we going to form this side? So there is a short way of knowing this. I want to teach you the short way of knowing the products. So this is one. You say one, this is two. You say this is one, this is two, like this. So, the two here, have you seen the one here will go the two there? So, when these two get to react, what are we going to form? So, we've got even this side here. We've got this one here. So, when these two reacts, what are we going to have? So, when sodium react to sulfate, we are going to have sodium sulfate. So, sodium sulfate is like that. Plus what? This is hydrogen reacting with an hydroxide. What is formed? It is water. Like that. So this is a short way of knowing this. These two will go with this one. One will go with the two. They must move in pairs. This is what you need to know and understand. So this is an example of a neutralization reaction. Where an acid gets to react with a base. Another type in which a salt can be formed. So another way in which a salt can be formed is whereby we get a base, you react a base plus, so a base plus ammonium compound. So an ammonium compound, ammonium compound. You know what a compound is. A compound, this is a chemical combination of elements. So 
when we react a base and an ammonium compound, we get to form a salt. A salt is formed. So now, which base can we use here? So I'm going to say sodium hydroxide. This is a base. Plus any ammonium compound, we can talk of ammonium chloride. So we can talk of ammonium chloride. This is what we can talk of. Ammonium chloride. So we can talk of ammonium chloride, which is giving us what? The same principle which I taught you at first, where you say this one here, the whole thing one, this is two. This is one, this is two. So this one here, have you seen the one here, which is what sodium will go with the two here. So that the one, two. So sodium chloride, what we are going to form is sodium chloride is going to be formed. Then I say plus. Plus what? So here, when this one reacts with this one here, this is an hydroxide. This is what? This is ammonium. So this one will give one hydrogen here to form water. So this one will be ammonia. So we are going to have ammonia here. We are going to have ammonia here. Then I say plus. Plus what? Since one hydrogen has gone this side to form water, so we are going to have water here like this. This is what we are going to have. So these are two ways in which a salt can be formed. These are two ways in which you can form a salt. So make sure you understand these, you understand these simple things. So now, before we go any further, there's something that uh, I want you to understand. A salt. So when we are talking about a salt, a salt can either be soluble or insoluble. This is what you need to understand. So when we are talking about a salt, a salt can either be soluble, we can have a soluble salt or an insoluble salt. So how can you know that this is an insoluble salt? How can you know that this is a soluble salt? There is what we call a solubility rule. So solubility rules will tell you whether the type of a salt that you are dealing with is an insoluble salt or is a soluble salt. So I want you to understand this and I want you to get this concept very well. So I want you to understand what I'm really talking about so that we get a full understanding and we never fail any question under sorts when you are taught to prepare any type of a sort. So I want you to get this and I want you to understand this. So let us look at the solubility rules. Look at the solubility rules. So I will say solubility rules. We look at solubility rules. So rule number one, what you need to understand, rule number one is that all nitrates, all nitrates are soluble. This is what you need to understand. So all nitrates are what are soluble. So any salt where there is nitrate, just know that that salt is what that salt is a soluble salt. So any salt that is going to contain a nitrate in it, you know what nitrate is. So any salt that will contain a nitrate in it, just know that you are talking about the uh, uh, we are talking about the. Uh, uh, soluble salts. So like this is nitric acid. Have you seen this is what? Nitric acid. So this is a nitric acid. So in this nitric acid, have you seen? So we've got this one here, which is what? The, this is nitric acid. There is nitrate in it. Have you seen? So when you get this one here, you say, okay, let me get this one here. I say, Nitric acid, this is nitric acid. So, nitric acid, when I react this with, uh, let me say, I react it with uh, uh, a base. If I react it with uh, a base, so let me say, I react it with what? Sodium hydroxide. What am I going to form here? So, what I'm going to form here will be called what? So, what I'm going to form here, the same one, I'm going to form what? Sodium 
nitrate. Have you seen sodium nitrate? Plus what? Plus water. This is what I'm going to form. So this salt, since there is nitrate in it, which means that this is a what? This is a soluble salt. So these are just examples that I'm giving you. So what I mean is that any salt where there is uh, nitrate in it, just know that you are dealing with a soluble salt. This is rule number one. They are about five. They are very simple. I'm going to make them simple so that you understand them. So this is number one rule where I said that any salt where there is nitrate, just know that that is a soluble salt. An example is this one. Have you seen we've got what? Sodium nitrate. Meaning sodium nitrate is a soluble salt. Number two, principle number two, or rule number two, that you need to know is that all chlorides, all chlorides are soluble. All chlorides are soluble, except, so, except what? All chlorides are soluble, except silver chloride and lead chloride. These are two things that you need to know and understand. Any salt where there is a chloride, let's say sodium chloride. So sodium chloride is a soluble salt. Whenever you are talking about sodium chloride, is a soluble salt. Why? Because all chlorides are what? All chlorides are soluble. Except these two. Meaning silver chloride and lead chloride, these are insoluble salts. So all chlorides are soluble except except what except silver chloride and lead chloride these two are insoluble but any salt which will contain a chloride in it it is a soluble salt except these two so silver chloride and lead chloride these are what these are insoluble salts let us go to the third one let us go to the third one so i'm going to say all sulfates, so these will really help you. All sulfates are soluble. All sulfates are soluble. So I'm going to use a term here which will help you understand this. All sulfates are soluble except, except what? I'm going to use this word. So except we've got three of them. Where you've got uh, barium sulfate, this one. Secondly, we've got another one where we've got calcium sulfate. We've got another one here which is called uh, lead uh, sulfate. So we are going to talk of lead sulfate like this. So these are three ones. So meaning these three are what are insoluble under sulfates. Only these three are insoluble. So, whenever you've got uh, any sulfate, any salt where there is sulfate, just know that that is a what? A soluble salt. Apart from these three, barium sulfate is an insoluble salt. Calcium sulfate is an insoluble salt. Lead sulfate is an insoluble salt. So, a term that can help you remember on sulfates, I'm going to use this term, which is, I'm going to say, baleka. Have you seen Baleka? Telling you that only Baleka is insoluble. The first two letters, it is for barium. These two read this calcium. So we use this term. This term can help you. Baleka. Meaning that barium read and calcium. These are insoluble salts. So barium sulfate. Insoluble salt. Barium. Let's say. Calcium sulfate, this one calcium, is an insoluble salt. Lead sulfate is an insoluble salt. So, this is what you need to know and understand. Let us go to the third one, We our oh, fourth one. We go to the fourth one. So, the fourth one is that all carbonates, all carbonates, all carbonates are insoluble. All carbonates are insoluble except 
salts of sodium, potassium, and ammonium. This is ammonium like this. This is ammonium. This is what you need to know and understand. So all carbonates are insoluble except salts of sodium. So any salt where there is sodium, it is a soluble salt. Any salt where there is potassium, that is a soluble salt. And any salt where there is ammonium, that is a soluble salt. So whenever we are talking about sodium carbonate, we are talking about a soluble salt. Potassium carbonate, that is a soluble salt. Ammonium carbonate, that is a soluble salt. But any salt which will contain a carbonate, apart from these three, it is an insoluble salt. This is what you need to understand. And lastly, the last one is that all sorts, all sorts of sodium, potassium, and ammonium, and ammonium are soluble. This is what you need to understand. So hope you've gotten something on this. These are five solubility rules that you need to know and understand. These five are going to help you know whether the type of a sort that you are dealing with is an insoluble sort or the type of a sort that you are dealing with is an insoluble sort. These five are going to help you. So the first one that we did, the first one that we did was what? I said all nitrates, I said all nitrates are soluble. So any salt where there is nitrate, it is a soluble salt. Secondly, I went to chlorine where I said all chlorides are soluble except silver chloride and lead chloride. This is what you need to know and understand. Thirdly, I said all sulfates are soluble except these three, which are barium sulfate, calcium sulfate, and lead sulfate. And I gave you this term that to help you remember, which is bareka, barium lead calcium, meaning these are insoluble. Then the fourth one was all carbonates are insoluble except salts of sodium, potassium, and ammonium. Then the last one was all sorts of calcium, potassium, and ammonium are soluble. So these are five things that uh, you need to know. These are five things that uh, you need to understand. Let us now look at how to prepare uh, these sorts. How can you prepare a soluble sort? How can you prepare insoluble sorts? So we are going to start with the how to prepare an, uh, a soluble sort. How can you prepare soluble salts? So let us look at preparation of soluble salts. Preparation of soluble salts. I will give you two methods in which you can prepare a soluble salt. There are only two methods you can use to prepare a soluble salt. So the first one that we are going to start with, it is called the titration method. Titration method. So we use the titration method. And the titration method can only be used to these types of salts. Potassium, I mean sodium, potassium, and ammonium. These three can be used. So when you want to prepare a soluble salt that is containing sodium, potassium, and ammonium, we use this method, which is called what? Which is called the uh, titration method. By what type of a reaction? The reaction is called neutralization reaction. Neutralization reaction. It is called a neutralization reaction. So where we get to react uh, an acid so we get to react an acid plus a what? Plus an alkali. So an alkali. For better terms, we can just say a base. To form a what? 
to form a sort we always form a sort brassy quarter this is what you need to know and understand this is just the first method have you seen this is just the first what this is just the first method that we get to use it is called the titration method and this titration method amongst the soluble sorts it can only be used to these three sodium potassium and ammonium it can only be used to these three so let's say you want to prepare so i will start with uh, let's say you want to prepare this one here so have you seen this is what sodium so a salt that is containing sodium we can talk of uh, let's say you are told this is what sodium chloride sodium chloride so how was sodium chloride formed using titration so what are we supposed to use an acid so any acid so on our carry here we talk of a base so we consider this first one a base that has got sodium it is called what sodium hydroxide plus an acid here that is containing chlorides it is called what hydrochloric acid this one to form what to form a salt what's the name of the salt sodium chloride so sodium chloride plus what plus water is being produced this is the first one what if we are talking about the potassium so potassium let's say maybe you are told to prepare i will talk of potassium nitrate what if you are given potassium uh, nitrate you're given potassium okay uh, not nitrate let me just say potassium sulfate i will just go with the easy ones that you will be able to understand what if you are given potassium sulfate so what can you do to prepare this what are you supposed to react so i'm following this reaction an acid that contain i can follow this there is no problem an acid which contain a sulfate it is what sulfuric acid so I'll say sulfuric acid plus an alkyl or a base that contain a potassium that is potassium hydroxide giving us what what are we going to have this side we are going to have what potassium sulfate potassium sulfate will be formed plus water this is what you need to understand a salt that is having this one ammonium we can talk of ammonium nitrate so how is ammonium nitrate ammonium nitrate is like this so i'm going to say this is ammonium nitrate this is ammonium what okay, let me do this ammonium nitrate this is ammonium nitrate how can you prepare this okay you say you can follow this you can start with any what is important are the products the products which are formed so an acid which contain a nitrate an acid which contain a nitrate what do we call that acid nitric acid how is nitric acid nitric acid is like this this is how nitric acid is you say plus plus have you seen a base that is containing ammonium it is called ammonium hydroxide ammonium hydroxide to form what ammonium nitrate plus water so ammonium nitrate plus what plus water is going to be formed plus water will be formed so this these all reactions here which i've written here can be prepared by using titration we get to use what we get to use titration so these sorts here this is called these all of these which i've written here or any we've got at least we've got quite a lot of them so as long as there is sodium potassium and ammonium you can use what you can use titration to prepare them you can use 
dehydration to prepare them. Then let us look at another method. Another method which is method 2. We can use filtration. We can use what? Filtration. We can use filtration to prepare a, a different kind or a group of salt. So this one is applicable to where, where non what non sodium potassium and ammonium these ones Ammo, ammonium so as long as it is as the salt that you are dealing with it is a soluble salt but it is not having sodium potassium and ammonium we use what we use filtration we get to use filtration I believe we know how to titrate and we know how to use uh, filtration. So any salt that is containing, uh, that is not containing sodium, potassium and ammonium, we use what? Filtration. So any salt that will not contain these three, you need to use what? Filtration. But remember, we are dealing with soluble salts. So any soluble salt that is not having sodium, potassium, and ammonium, we need to use filtration. So for example, this can exist in three. So how can that salt be formed? How can that salt be formed? When you react an acid and a metal. So you get to use these ones. Whenever you react an acid, let's say you say acid plus metal. Just use acid. Acid plus metal, what are we going to form? When you react acid plus a carbonate, acid plus a what? A carbonate. So acid plus a carbonate, what are you going to have? Let's say you've got acid plus an hydroxide, acid plus an oxide, so an oxide. What are you going to have? So these ones, you can use what? What, for example, when we react these two. So what are formed here? Let's say you get uh, on, on here where you are react, reacting an acid and a metal. Let's say you get zinc plus sulfuric acid. What you are going to form is zinc sulfate plus hydrogen gas. We've got this one here, which is acid plus a carbonate. So when you react an acid and a carbonate, we can talk of a uh, carbonate can be a zinc carbonate plus sulfuric acid. What you are going to form is what? Zinc sulfate. So you are going to form what? You are going to form a zinc sulfate. That is a salt that is going to be produced. When we are talking about an, uh, an oxide, so a metal is having an oxide, metal oxide. So we can talk of sulfuric acid plus zinc oxide. What you are going to form is zinc sulfate. You know that zinc sulfate is a soluble salt. So and it can be prepared by using filtration. So these are methods that you need to know. These are, are now the methods that you need to know on soluble salts. So let me give you now steps which you need to follow when you want to prepare these sorts let me give you methods that you need to get and understand so the steps now let us look at the steps but steps that you need to get the first one we are going to start with this one where we use filtration when do we use filtration when a sort of salt is not containing sodium potassium and ammonium so whenever a salt is not containing these three, we use filtration. So how do you get to prepare? Number one, what you're going to do is that you so you say you get a beaker. So this is a beaker. Have you seen? You get a beaker. So so first one, you put the acid. Put it acid you put the acid in the beak put acid and comb it 
Party. Don't bore. Have you seen? Second step. Second step that you need to do after putting the acid, you add the excess. You add the excess metal. So you're going to add the excess metal to an acid to form to form a concentrated solution. Form a concentrated solution so these are steps that i'm telling you then you filter filter to correct filtrates so you filter to correct filtrates have you seen you filter to correct what to correct filtrates after you get the filtrates Put them in a cool press to form to form crystals. This is how you get to prepare these. So these steps that I've written here, these are the only steps that you need to know. These are the only steps that you need to understand. So let's say you want to prepare any sort. You want to prepare any sort. You want to prepare any sort. You can prepare any sort as long as it is not containing uh, those things. Let's say you are preparing uh, zinc sulfate. Let us get this. You want to prepare what? Zinc sulfate. This is zinc sulfate. How can you prepare zinc sulfate with it? these procedures that I've written here. So how are you going to prepare? One is that you need to identify the metal. It is zinc. Which acid? Sulfuric acid. Have you seen? So what you're going to do is that you get the beaker, put the sulfuric acid into the beaker, home it but don't bore. Add excess zinc to an acid to form a concentrated solution. Filter. What's the reason of filtrating? So that you can correct the filtrates. You know the filtrates. The filtrates. This is a solution that passes through a filter paper. When you correct those uh, liquids that uh, penetrate through the uh, filter paper, you get them. Those are filtrates. Put them in a cool press. So once you get those, those are the same what? Those are the same... Uh, uh, sorry, results of zinc sulfate. You get them. Put them in the cupre so that crystals can be formed. So these are steps that you get to do. So this is how you prepare it. This is how you need to prepare it. These are steps that you need to get. Hope you are able to understand. So even if you are dealing with uh, magnesium sulfate, have you seen? As long as you are dealing with magnesium sulfate, you know that which one are you going to use here? This is self, this one, sulfuric. So let let me talk of uh, let's say you are dealing with magnesium chloride. Have you seen magnesium chloride? Which acid are you going to use? Hydrochloric acid. So just follow these same steps. You put the hydrochloric acid into the beaker, warm it, but don't boil. Add excess magnesium to a dilute you can put it 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 can be a dilute to a dilute acid to form a concentrated solution then you filter you do what filter to correct the filtrates after you see those filtrates then you put them in a cool press so that the crystals can be formed the crystals of this what this sort that you are preparing so this is what you need to know and understand the second one is that one for titration i believe we know how to titrate so this is the second one for titration so titration is used so this one is used for whenever you are preparing what 
sodium, potassium, and ammonium. This is what you need to get. So whenever you are just having these three, then you need to use uh, titration. So how do you get to use titration now? How do you get to use titration? The first one, this one, is where the first step, so I'll say, number one is where you titrate. Have you seen? You do what? You titrate. You get acid and a base. You titrate them. Acid and base. Like this. Acid and base. Where you are going to get something. Let's say this is the acid here. It is in this tube. Just put up something that you are able to understand. Here. What are you having? You are having 1.0 moles. So 1.0 moles of the of the solution let's say this is hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid solution then down here what are you having so here what are you having this one you are titrating so what are you having in here so what you are having in here is what 25 centimeters cubed of what uh, of we can talk of uh, let's say we just talk of sodium hydroxide that is a base have you seen sodium hydroxide with the, with the phenol so I'll say so how do we spell this so T this is T H A L E I N this is the word we use what uh phenolphthalein this is uh what we get to use so we do what we titrate so when we titrate here we are going to see a color change here we are going to see an, an end point where we notice a change to this solution have you seen which is here we notice uh, a change to this solution so when we notice a change which is here the sec second one that we are going to do is that we are going to let this one pass through crystallization. So the second one is crystallization. Have you seen crystallization? So you let this pass through crystallization. So crystallization, you know that where you put the solution, so you get the solution, you heat it. Why are you heating the solution? So that you can remove water molecules. So under crystallization here, we get to heat the solution. Heat the what? The solution. You heat the solution to remove what? To remove some particles of water. To remove some particles of what? Some particles of water. This is what we get to do. So this is a solution here. We've got a solution here. This is a tube got a solution we titrate here we are titrating there so here it having a stand we must have a stand this side so just uh, make this so that we understand what i'm trying to say then lastly we also involve what filtration and drying so what we do is that we do what we filtrate we involve filtration have you seen we involve what filtration and drying where we get to dry so these are things that we get to use whenever we are talking about those sorts number one you do what you titrate so you explain this part you titrate what you're given an acid i told you how to form acid and base depending on the sort which you are given so if you are given to prepare let's say you are given to prepare sodium chloride. Have you seen? So, which base are you going to use? Which base are you going to use? Which acid are you going to use? You know that you are going to use what? Sodium hydroxide. Then, an acid, you are going to use this. So, we use, you explain all these processes that I've explained here. You get all this concept you understand it clearly then you tell them so filtration i've explained on filtration where you filtrate using filter papers 
after that then you dry the what you dry the solution so that you can remove some impurities so you can evaporate you evaporate some so that you remove those impurities have you seen so after you uh, filtrate so under filtration after you filtrate you dry you dry the solution so this is what you get to do so these are procedures you need to get this is what you need to understand thank you so much don't forget to like the video don't forget to share so i'm going to do another video on how you can prepare now an insoluble salt how can you prepare an insoluble salt i'm going to explain on that one so watch the video that i'm going to do tomorrow where i'm going to deal with the insoluble salts i'm going to make insoluble salts very simple insoluble salts are very simple compared to these because these you get to know the titration and the filtration but for insoluble salts that one is very simple you are going to understand it thank you so much